Oma Jnana Timinanda Sya Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Shakshun Militam Jineta Smai Sri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pestaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavati Paskatya Desatarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadha, Shiva Saligoda, Bhaktavinda. I thank, first of all, the community of our family here in Göteborg for organizing this event. The topic we chose for this event is exactly the top priority of our mission. It is called consciousness. We call it conscious medics, conscious artists, conscious educators, conscious family members, conscious citizen on Mother Earth, consciousness, the ongoing consciousness, the everlasting consciousness. You see, one man put on an advertisement, I laughed about it, said, if you believe in reincarnation, recycle. So, it says a lot, you know, it's, it's such a simple statement, you know. Because if you have to come back, you get the mess back you leave behind. No? So, uh, reincarnation is a top subject when you're talking about consciousness. Because consciousness means an ongoing responsibility. And Dharma means an ongoing chance to have joy while you accept your responsibilities. Something sometimes people they really get it the wrong way. They think that consciousness is something unpleasant, something which will bother you. It's exactly the other way around. Your consciousness will be bothered if you don't become conscious of what you're doing. Consciousness is very much related to mind and intelligence. What is the mind doing? Reflecting. What is the intelligence doing? Decision making. They work together. They're not always in agreement exactly, because there's another portion involved which is called sensualism. Sensual demands which drag us into different uh, directions. Nevertheless, mind and intelligence are here in the focus of attention. And Consciousness is the sum total of awareness plus something which goes before that. Something which we bring into this life from previous consciousness. If we do not consider that, we will be in a very awkward situation because we will not be able to explain any type of phenomena, very important phenomena, substantial phenomena like being born in an unfortunate situa situation, like in a civil war, or with some deficiency in your body, in your family, whatever, whereas other people are born in opulence, best education, never had to worry about anything, so there's a lot of things to be discussed in this connection. What's happening? In one sense or another, we all learn one big lesson. That lesson is the lesson of cause and effect. There is a question. What is intelligence? What is that exactly? What does it entail? And the answer is, that intelligence is the gift of God. 
to allow you to see the connection between cause and effect. You try to be intelligent without this help, without considering cause and effect, that is not intelligence. It is simply misinformed, speculative. Therefore, intelligence has to be subjected to a very deep research of realities. These realities which are the underlying principles of our existence. The underlying realities of consciousness. Consciousness is fantastic, but wait a second. What is consciousness without the body? Very important question, because consciousness is exactly what connects us with consciousness. <laughs> this is not rhetoric. Think about it quite carefully. You are conscious of being conscious. Wow, that's a discovery. Because if you're conscious of being conscious, you have to realize that you've got to be conscious about what you're doing. Because that's what you got the consciousness for. And consciousness, as it starts, as we see it, as we manifest it, in natural science, we observe consciousness from the moment of when it appears. But even that, they don't have to clear. Because when this little spermatozoid moves his little tail and goes on its journey to see if it can meet the egg, it has some ambition, right? It's on the move. And it knows where it wants to go. And when it hits the goal before the all other 8 billion spermatozoids which are involved in the race, <laughs> when he hits the goal first, bang! Now I got a body. The others don't. So you are kind of winners, no? Just being born in a human body, you made a lot of efforts and you, you got there. So why this little spermatozoid moves the tail? Why, why is it moving? Why is it so eager? Because it's conscious. There is a consciousness. There's a cogni cognitive force of movement. We don't know how it works, we, but it doesn't have a brain. Yeah, it doesn't have a brain, but it has a tail, doesn't it? Doesn't it? And it moves and it wants to get somewhere. It has a goal. So, if it has a goal, it must have an ambition, it must have a projection, or you think this is all happening just, just like that, without consciousness. Well, maybe you can't see the consciousness. Maybe you don't know those details, as you don't know many details. Under the heaven and under the earth, there's millions of things we don't know. And maybe we'll never know. And maybe we find out later. <coughs> so, here you got this opportunity, you made it, you got a human body. Now what happens in the womb? Is there consciousness? No, there's just some tissues, some replication of cells. They divide and multiply and it's a system and you look at other microscope, it looks pretty weird, no? Boop, 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 and they're going up and say, oh, what's going on here, no? Is there consciousness behind it? Well, if you put your cells which are working in your body under the electro microscope, it looks the same. You know, you're also going boop, 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 but actually not. You're thinking. Actually, you're conscious. That's why you're here. But now you know it. Now you know it because you're conscious of being conscious. That is a very special focus. Now, in the womb, there's not so much free will, no? Not so much free choice, you're just there. And all you do is grow. But then, you may be unlucky. The silent cry, which was filmed by an American doctor, was a revolutionary discovery of the anxiety the fetus feels when the abortion is going on. This supposed to be not conscious little being is sucking his thumb in the mouth and it is hoping that mom will receive it, is realizing things are going another way and the little embryo is fighting for its life.
So in this way, there is somebody who wants to be born. He didn't come here to be killed. None of us came here to be killed. We will all die anyway, but that's another issue. We get there a little later, the phenomena of death, which is also very important. Because as you develop your consciousness throughout life, at the moment of death, you're facing the largest and most significant of all the tests and trials which you have come here to learn. So, in this way, the child is born, you are born, and now only you are getting rights. Now only people say, okay, okay, he's here, he must have some rights, little baby. Not too many, you know, it's pretty tough life these days, even for children. But he's here, he's a human being, he's entitled to have a passport, residence, he's get a lot of recognition now, no? He's, he's conscious. What are his potency? He's moving. He is reciprocating. He is aware. He has a cognitive, cognitive power. And there is somebody who is thinking, trying to de make determinations. So an intelligent being is in front of you. Somebody like you an intelligent being who is a concern for what's going to happen to him. So this is a kind of a little description how we come here and how we are getting aware. Now, of course, we are still very subjected to the environment. We are subjected to the traumas in the childhood. We are subjected to by the family we are living in, by the educations. Is there any people are looking after us, are they giving us affection or are they wanting to rape us or want to steal whatever we have. You know, it's, it's like we are being brought into life and into existence in a different way which forms our consciousness. And consciousness now is coming onto the forefront of observation. What's happening to your consciousness? What's happening to your consciousness after you see a movie like Rambo? 20,000 people killed, then he lies down with any girl, and then he's the star, and then everybody admires him, and you just watched this one and a half hour. What happened to your consciousness when you watched this? I could give you 100,000 uh, other examples, I just picked one little extreme one. So well, what happened? You are watching a senseless killer who has been paid and honored for his killing, He's killing people he doesn't know. He's killing people who haven't done anything to him. But because he's good in killing, so he's the star, the terminator, whoever, no? And of course he's handsome and all the girls are flying after him, no? So you see, oh, this is, this is to be uh, the role model we should go after, no? Go to the gym, get your muscles like Schwarzenegger, huh? and smoke like this guy and, 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 and walk like that one and like this you're getting impregnated with role models which have nothing to do with good consciousness and it's just like that all life through now the worst thing comes you go to school and you ask what is consciousness Ooh, now we get on tough group waters what do they tell you about consciousness consciousness is an alteration of cells, chemical combinations, which arose in the primordial soup as amino acids found a certain environmental support for developing their first movement, their first awareness. So you are really nothing but Mr. Chemical. And you owe everything to chemicals. And the pharmacies they're going to take care of you as long as you're here. So if you need any extra chemicals, you go and buy more chemicals. You can get them in pill form, in injection form, in cream form. There's a lot of chemicals waiting for you throughout your life. So they are telling us in school that our life, our consciousness, is a subproduct of some circumstance 
created by chance. Chance means just like that. No reason, no rhyme. So, poor guy. You really popped into the existence with no rhyme and no reason and you're pretty mad about trying to accomplish this and that. Above all, you're so obsessed with love. Where the hell you get that one from? Is that for the survival of the species? That you're so obsessed with finding some people who like you and love you and you can exchange with? Well, very often science and education simply, they owe you the answer. They just switch the subject. They just say, no, now we study something else and you better prepare for your exams. Because if you don't pass your exams, you're going to be bad off. So they keep you all your life in anxiety for passing something. While you don't really know why you came here to begin with. You don't really know what you're supposed to do with this consciousness. With this thing which is inside of you like a potential volcano. Huh? Like, what am I doing here? Why am I supposed to study all these speculations? All these things, they tell me it's true. And I have a notion that it's not true. I have a feeling that they're telling me things which they don't know themselves. And they're teaching it to me because they don't want to know more. Or something like this. It's very hard to question the motivations of others. It's much better to question and to analyze our own motivations. Because when you try to understand the motivations of others, you can never get a real clue. Because... You can't go into them and feel for them. So, if you just focus on yourself, then you will get much easier access to higher realities, to understanding consciousness, the secrets of consciousness. There are secrets about consciousness. Wow! If you would know what the Vedas have to say about consciousness, you'd be trembling. You'll be, you'll be perspiring. You'll be, you'll be dancing. You, you'll be so surprised what they say about consciousness, where it comes from, and how and why we have it, and what we can do with it, is a very, very exciting topic. But it's very, very demanding. Because in order to go there, you have to agree to question your preconceived notions until today. If you are not ready to do that, you are just like one of those intellectuals who close up to everything. They have a nice saying in South America, they say, you start becoming an old man or an old woman when you stop learning more things. So we see sometimes young guys, they are already totally closed. They are not questioning anything, they are just, I have to do this. And they're like, in a, as a matter, matter of self-defense in materialism, they just uh, subscribe themselves to eat, sleep and be merry for tomorrow you die. Get as much joy as you can, anywhere you do, get drugged out, do anything, have sex as often as you like, with as many people as you like, as long as you don't have to pay for it, and in this way try to make your life uh, a sensational experience of your senses. More or less. Mm? One more, one less. Mm? But this is what is kind of the conclusion when you have no understanding of the potential of consciousness. What consciousness is really capable of providing for you, which is consciousness is entailed to bring to you. Now, before we go further on this topic, I want to simply uh, share with you one simple comprehension regarding consciousness. Consciousness, or let's put it that way, existence without consciousness is meaningless. If we would not be conscious of our existence, why talk about it? How to, how to talk about it? It's all zero. But now comes the next one, and that's a difficult one. What means consciousness if there's no possibility of fulfilling the expectations and the hopes of consciousness? What is consciousness if it is just a, an observation of frustrated 
desires and negative experiences, then consciousness, then life would be nothing but a perpetual torture. You would simply be devastated whenever you think about how this all came about and where is it heading. And this is exactly the opposite of what consciousness is there. Consciousness is scientifically expressed our potential connection to three realms. First of all, there is Sat. Consciousness is the indication of existence. Existence, you may have the doubt, as the scientists do, that, conscious, that existence is a temporary affair. But just the fact that you do exist, even temporary, means you exist. Now, you don't know how you came into existence, so you should not conclude anything about existence until you know about it. Because otherwise you'll be just a blind follower of some propaganda. And we are not here for talking or submitting to propaganda. We are here for getting the essence of our life. Number two, consciousness is capable of accumulating information, data, as a foundation for what we are calling wisdom. Wisdom sounds beautiful, no? You can put as much information in a computer nowadays as you can imagine, no? Of course, not as much as you put in the brain. Our brain is the computer super duper, like no computer ever has been made, what it is capable. Anyhow, they're trying to get close, no? They're trying, yeah, let's do it, you know? How many more gigas we need, no? To copy one cell. To copy the information you have in one of your billions and billions of cells, no? How many computers you need? How much data you need? Anyhow, it's a separate issue. So you have a capacity of receiving information and processing it, evaluating all the information. What does that mean? That you, that means you're different from all the computers in the world because they cannot program themselves. They need the human brain to be programmed and to be created. So you are more than all these computers together. They are not alive. They can do a whole lot of things which you can't do because just the mechanical processing, but you can do everything a computer will never be able to do. So, computer or machinery of any kind, Yantra Vidya. Once uh, there was a conversation of a great yogi named Arjuna and he got a benediction and uh, that was to learn everything about the science of machinery. So he asked Lord Krishna, shall I spend time to study about machinery? And Lord Krishna says, don't waste your time with machines. Come to the essence, consciousness. Consciousness is far higher than machines. It has invented all the machines. And trying to sidetrack you and get you all hooked up and all, all enthused. Oh, I got a new machine, a new electronic, a new this, a new that. Come on, this is just toys compared to life. Compared to the mystery of your eyesight, your hearing capacity, your feeling, your love. There's no machine which can love. And you can love so much. As a matter of fact, it's in the consciousness of love where your life starts being what you're looking for. But we get there a little later. Huh? But you want to compare a loving being with any amount of buildings, machines, bank accounts, gold bars? Come on! For your child, you throw away the whole life, the whole world if you have to save your child, 
because you love your child. As soon as you love somebody, all these relative things just disappear into nowhere land. If you don't love somebody, oh, that's a different story. Then you may sell your mother. Hmm? Some people do such things, you know. There's people, they send out their girls, their little children, for prostitution, to make money. You can think it's possible that somebody could do that. Yes, there is possible. For money, people are pretty mad, you know. Let's not get into that issue because I, it carries me away. So, you have a capacity to accumulate information, to process it, and by the grace of your consciousness, you can become conscious, and you can become responsible, and you can become a marvelous surprise. You can become the most amazing person, like a Mother Teresa, like an Albert Einstein, like an Albert Schweitzer, like who knows who you like. I'm sure you like some people who you consider very special, like your mother, for example. Special, right? So I, I got you. There's somebody very special, and you can be special like them. You have all that potency. It's, it's right there in your DNA, you know? All this power, all this graciousness you received. But it's actually not in the code and not in the cells. It's in the soul. And the soul is the foundation of consciousness. Anyhow, there is one more thing which you are entailed to develop. One more thing which really makes you who you are. Which is the most exciting part of existence. Which really gets you going. And me too. And what is that? It's called Ananda. Ananda Mayobiasat. It is love and feeling. It is fulfillment. It is inner joy. It is the feeling that I am doing the right thing for the right people. I am part of a whole, of an integral situation where we are all nothing less than brothers and sisters. Because we all got the same mother, Mother Earth, Mother Nature, and we all got the same seed-giving Father. That seed-giving Father, you may have some doubt about him, because that's quite common these days, but don't worry about it. Today we are not discussing the Father. We are discussing you, the Son, and the Daughter. So let's stick with that. We are discussing consciousness, this miraculous manifestation of inner sweetness, beauty, and love. You! Not the glasses you have on your nose, not the earrings you wear, not the mark of the dress you wear, not the color of the skin neither, nor the color of your eyes either. No, 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 no. We are not getting sidetracked by these externals. No? They may preoccupy you when you watch the mirror, but they are not pre preoccupying us today. We see much deeper than that. We go right into you, into your existence of consciousness, your ability to process information, and your eagerness and capacity to perceive joy and determination up to the point of being ready to sacrifice yourself for your love or for your beloved people. You can sacrifice yourself. Nobody has to sacrifice himself. You know, even within the animals there is sacrifice for each other. Many animals risk their own life to save a family member of theirs. There's plenty of examples of that 
You go into uh, the research on this topic, there's, there's buffaloes, there's, there's birds who risk their life for others, there's dogs who live, risk their life for others. There's, I mean, it's just plentiful. And humans, they also have that capacity to risk themselves for those who they love. And that is not Darwinistic. Because the survival of the fittest, it doesn't bring in any need for compassion and not for sacrifice. On the contrary, you'd always take advantage of anybody who is weaker to stay with what he has now or something like that. No? So love is actually something which is the notion of the value of consciousness. That's why we are also preoccupied with our loving desires. And love is the crown jewel of our very aspirations. We are always hoping that our endeavors, that our relationships with others will bear the fruit of finding a sincere heart-to-heart -heart relationship. That is a very clear detail. And our strive is going in this direction. Everything which has to do with lust is actually a perverted form of love. Everything which has to do with profit, with money, is a perverted form of frustrated lust. I couldn't satisfy my lust, let me get money, then I will be able to satisfy my lust. Everything which has to do with name, fame, distinction, is another perverted form of lust, which was not satisfied. In psychology, you study a lot about these things. Hmm? And everything which has to do with worship, wanting to be worshipped, wanting to be the center, wanting to be the number one, the big ego trip, is again lust in a frustrated form. Because why you want to be the number one? Because you want everybody to love you. And if they don't love you, you get upset about it. You cannot understand life. Why people are not discovering my greatness? What's wrong with them? <laughs> And then we start, maybe we have to change this world so that they love me. <laughs> that they get the idea how wonderful I am. But then you forget that each and every one is on the same trip, trying to, dis trying to co convince you to, to become a worshipper of them. Somebody who admires you, their greatness. So in, in, that way, in that way, competition is born. And competition is like, I'm going to show them that I'm the best. I'm going to make it. I'm going to run faster and I'm going to memorize better and I'm going to paint myself better and I'm going to win this prize and I'm going to make it to be Miss Universe. I don't know how, but I'll try. Huh? So we suffer. Competition means suffering. Because instead of giving, instead of spending our consciousness how to give, we are just trying to get, to get, to get, to accumulate, to, to cash in, so to speak, you know, to, to, to make a deal with nature. While we are growing older and becoming more diseased, and our beautiful young body starts crumpling like a raisin, and it's announcing we're not going to stay here for too long. No? Your bones become brittle, your hair turns white, and your ego is still wild. <laughs> no! What's happening? Everything is gone, all my dreams are gone, still nobody loves me. And I still don't have money either. So things are pretty bad, right? So what we do? We cry. We get depressed, we, we have all kinds of difficulties, we have to go to the psychologist. Maybe he has some prescription that you can bear life. Any 
anyhow, I've given a little bit of a crude description of how consciousness is subjected to contaminations and ambitions which are not fulfilled. And why not? Very simple, my dear friends. Because you have focused consciousness only on what science has taught you, your temporary existence. You have not focused your consciousness on consciousness itself, on its potential itself. You have not allowed yourself to enter into the transcendence of consciousness. While the transcendence of consciousness is so obvious because you came here conscious and you'll go conscious. Where you go? Well, if you really want to know, I can tell you. <laughs> Yang yang babis madam babam te yang ti yang ti kali madam tang tang ni bai ti kau ti ya sedat at bawa bawa vita. Wherever you focus your consciousness, your attention, at the moment of death, that will be the next destiny which you will reach to be born in such an environment, in such a family, in such a species, which will provide what you were so anxious to obtain. And if all you wanted to obtain were temporary things, you'll get another body and more temporary circumstances. Maybe they'll be more favorable than this lifetime, maybe they'll be worse. That depends on the accumulated action of your life. Every thought, every word, every action goes into the apradabda storage. What's that? That is something in the West we have heard about the Akash or the, the register of all information, the programming like, you know, nowadays we see how sophisticated programming is, no? that the even atmosphere can be stored in water. Hmm? You can, you can transmit messages in water. You must have heard of the Japanese scientists who took photos of how water molecules are transformed by atmosphere. So there's a registration system. There's something in this world which is so sophisticated that nothing is lost. And there's nothing new under the sun either, like Giordano Bruno said. So it is all known, and even you carry this with you. Why? Now, there's a very important thing. Please. Bear with me. It is the aprarapta in your subconsciousness. It is the underlying information which produces certain impulses in you which arise within you as vashanas or like desires which come into your existence and push you forward and push you forward and you think why am I desiring this so much why am I so eager to have this because you stored these things long time before in previous lifetimes this is not something you know why the little infant who after being born is already on a fighting trip is already on an ego trip even with the brother why is everything why the material world manifests in the youth you know, in a childish way, little children, they're on a big ego trip. And then when they become big, it gets worse. All, only thing which happens. You can clearly see that there is, there is anxieties which are there within children. Because it's not necessary, you know. Parents provide everything. Most children never have to worry about food, never have to worry about clothes, never have to worry about anything, but they are fighting with everybody. Even with their own mother. <laughs> really? Huh? If you don't give me what I want, then I... You know, when they throw themselves on the ground, you know, and start scrambling, and they're like, all the frustration of the previous life, they have to put it right there to the poor mother, and she don't know, what have I done? My education seems to be failing. Huh? Well, this is why we are very clear that we have had consciousness before. It's not that consciousness was a product of the womb, of the egg, in combination with the spermatozoid. That was not the origin of consciousness. Give yourself a break. Understand that there is something 
an ongoing principle, an ongoing power which is there within the soul. And now let's analyze the story of consciousness as it unfolds before us by those holy teachings as they have descended in the oldest of the traditions of this planet. The soul is described as the part and parcel, the portion of the universal consciousness. The soul is described as the potential lover of the whole and of the origin of the whole. The soul is the personification of love and has been allotted with individuality which makes it different from the entire universe of matter. This arises within each and every living entity as a special faculty given to us by the very source of consciousness, which is called the Supreme Consciousness. Supreme Consciousness is conscious of every consciousness. You are not really independent. No? Even if the child doesn't know who is the father, still there is a father. Hmm? Even if the child is an orphan and was put in the street and mother disappeared, still there is a mother. So let's not deny that something comes from something. Someone comes from someone. Soul comes from the soul. Doesn't There's no transformation from matter into life. Never has there been, nor will there be. And if anybody wants to tell you something different, he's simply selling you his ignorance with a post data check. And if you buy it, if you give away your life to this type of conception, you'll be cheated because you will never be able to cash that check. Consciousness is a power of the Supreme Consciousness and it has been given to you, it has been put into action for you to find, to realize yourself, to have a realization of the greatness of your own being and your connection. Sat, Chit, Ananda, as I explained previously, are the faculties which are pushing us forward. Now we are not focusing on temporary existence, we are just using temporary existence as a tool. Now we are talking about transcendental existence. And we are talking about three bodies. There is the body of the physical body, made out of earth, water, fire, air and ether. They comprise your physical body. And when you die, you keep your journey going with the subtle body and your soul. Physical bodies only live because of the presence of the soul, of the consciousness. The only way that you have a physical, a life body is because of that. Without your soul, this body rots immediately. It stinks terribly, so people quickly want to get rid of it. Nobody keeps happily dead corpse, because there's nothing interesting about that. Consciousness is gone. So in this way, we can understand that the subtle body will persist the existence of the gross body and carries all the information. Practically in the subtle body is also storage the subconsciousness. 
So, there's the mind, the intelligence, and the ego, the false ego, ahankara, which is practically the guiding principle of material existence. Egotism comes from the false ego. Love comes from the real ego. Very interesting, dear friends. They are very close to each other. The real ego is your love, and the false ego is your egotism, your self-love, your focus on your, own, on your own self as the object of everything. Now, this subtle body again covers the soul, and the soul is the transparent transcendental consciousness which is actually the underlying principle of the subtle body. The, where's the subtle body coming from? And where's the gross body coming from? Technically they're coming from the Pradhanha, from the Brahman. But they are coming through the filter called Mahatattva. And as they are filtered into the material atmosphere, they acquire these coverings which are like subtle surrounding spheres. Like when you're in a fog, you're surrounded by fog. You're not the fog, but it's there. You can't deny it. If you're engulfed by darkness, you look like you're darkness, but you're not. You're still the same guy. But darkness is there. So there's coverings. There are layers. They're going over you, and they practically become your subtle body. Karmic. Let me explain the word karmic. Karmic is according to the principles and the laws which govern this existence. According to this what has been provided, all these things have been provided for our fortune. We are very fortunate beings to be conscious. We are very fortunate that we can discuss these things and that we can draw conclusions from it. They are most important things. Top priority is consciousness and freeing consciousness from the shadowy coverings of passion and ignorance, avidya, ignorance. Like, for example, a drug addict. He has another covering. It's actually within the subtle body that he has become an addict and he feels now he needs this. He has created an artificial necessity. So he, he, he cannot think, even a moment, how he can live without the drug until he penetrates through that, until somebody drags him out of there and he wants to be dragged, otherwise he runs straight back. Huh? He says, pull me out from this covering, from this illusion, from this terrible, poisonous conditioning I'm in. I'm just giving an example, no? So if he's once he's out of the influence of cigarettes or heroin or anything like that or marijuana, and he feels so relieved, he goes, Oh, thank you. You just freed me from the most terrible suffering, from the terrible slavery. I tried to be happy by doing something which I myself knew wasn't going to make me happy, but I was conditioned. I was contaminated. I was actually incapable of freeing myself from this. So this condition, this situation is a bit similar of what the mind and the intelligence of the false ego are like. They are conditionings. They have been acquired as we came from the Pradhana, from the Brahman, into the Brahmandas through the Mahatattva, Mahatattva is the covering of the Brahmandas, we have acquired. Now, according to where we are born, we get more coverings. For example, if you're born as a crocodile, you have a real thick skin, a skin. Huh? You don't have such a skin like a crocodile. Hmm? Because he acquired a crocodile body, so he's even much more dense. These are questions of densities. The more dense 
the more avidya is there, the more density covers consciousness. Consciousness is still there. There's even consciousness in the mineral. But it is so dense, you cannot perceive it anymore. But it's moving slowly. Minerals are growing. There's action. Something's going on. Nothing comes from nothing. So it, minerals, insects, reptiles, birds, plants, amphibians, humans. Hey, what's going on? Where did that all came from? Where did the underlying principle, where was the, the blueprint of all that? print of everything is consciousness. Everything is there within the supreme power consciousness. Just like you dress your body because you want to be dressed like this. You put your hair the way you want to put your hair. And you came here because you wanted to come here. You move your body, everything is pushed on by consciousness. So in the same way by consciousness you're reaching the different destinations of this existence. It's all a very powerful thing which is going on by the grace of God. He has provided that possibility, that facility. So now, this soul, this eternal soul which is there within you, that wants to know what is the fulfillment of my consciousness? What is that which makes my consciousness the most glorious thing I can imagine? You see, frustration means that you are not feeling fulfilled. I think we all know a good portion of that. Fulfillment is the need. Our strive is for fulfillment. And what is the fulfillment? What is the future of consciousness? What is the next stage of consciousness? Well, to live in fulfillment. To act in fulfillment. To be a volunteer of spiritual fulfillment where your physical needs obviously are also taken care of. You don't have to worry about anything because you're not in control of anything. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's good news. You're not in control. So then, somebody else is in control. And he has taken care of you so nicely. He has proven himself already. And if you put yourself into his hands into the destiny of pure consciousness, of pure fulfillment, then you will understand the glories of love, which is intrinsically the essence of consciousness. Even though existence and knowledge is important to a certain degree, after all, it can be discarded at the point of love. And of course, since existence is eternal, there's no way to discard it anyway. <laughs> and since knowledge is as eternal as there's something to be known, it's called Veda, so it will never be discarded either. But if love is discarded, then even you have knowledge and existence, it's worthless. So you better focus on love. You better focus on the power of love, the power of your soul to be a loving soul, the power of your soul to be a giving soul. The power of your existence to be able to be grateful and compassionate and not to left live just in this little miserable world of ego consciousness where the only one who cares for you is yourself and that's a big frustration for you as well. And the only one who is patting your back and your head is your mom because she thinks you are his, her brother. And she thinks if he's unhappy, I did something wrong. <laughs> but that's her ego. Because she wants to realize herself as being a successful mom. So if, if her son is committing suicide, mom feels most terrible. If the son is intoxicating, destroying his life, mother is crying at home. Right? Why? Because it's her product. And she doesn't want her product to go 
astray. Consciousness before and consciousness now and consciousness of tomorrow is perfectly united. There's only one consciousness. It's the consciousness of now. Because there's only one time. Now. You're only now. There will always be now. Everything else is simply concoction. Time, the mystery of time. That is another thing. It's a trial. When you're going to be that love which you want to find. When are you going to be that surrender to the truth as you wish others to be surrendered and truthful with you? When you will be the ideal which you hoped to find when you made your, when you went on this journey to find love? Get rid of all the contaminations. Reject the wrong role models. And reject the consumer society which is based on your misery. They want you to smoke. They want you to drink. They want you to think that you're the greatest. They want you to be a slave, a slave of so many wrong conceptions. This is the nature of illusion.